The official release of Zen Armor 1.16 is just around the corner, promising some exciting new capabilities. Today, we'll take a sneak peek at one of the new capabilities introduced in this release called Community ID Network Flow Hashing, or Community ID for short. Community ID is useful in situations where you may need to easily correlate log data between different data sets without the need to create complicated joins between your data. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly exactly how to do this by using community ID to match the network traffic session logs created by Zenarma with the Sysmon event logs generated on a Windows client in order to build a complete end-to-end -end picture of the network connection from the application or process initiating the connection on the Windows client to its final destination endpoint. Having the ability to pivot quickly between large data sets will give you an edge while analyzing your live network traffic for anomalies during a threat hunt. So let's get started. So before we get into the setup, I think it makes sense to briefly explain Community ID and why it was created. Community ID was created as part of a collaboration effort between the Zeek and the Suricata communities where there was a need to correlate log data between these two tools without having to create complex joins between the data sets, which can be a tedious process. Community ID provides a very simple solution to this problem by making use of a cryptographic hash function that is derived from the network connections source and destination ports, the source and destination IP addresses, a seed and the transport protocol TCP or UDP, which creates a unique identifier for that specific flow of traffic. Because the network connection characteristics or tuple remain constant for this traffic flow across the network. The same unique identifier will be derived across multiple systems capturing this traffic flow by making use of the same community ID hashing function. These unique identifiers can then be used while correlating log data between the different systems on your network to give you more context to the flow of traffic. If this does not make complete sense at this stage, don't worry. After seeing this in action later in this video, it'll clear things up for you. Since the inception of Community ID, it has been integrated into many other security oriented applications outside of Zeek and Suricata, such as MISP, Security Onion, Helk, Wireshark, Elasticsearch, and now Zenarmor, to name a few. For this video, I've chosen to use the Elk stack because of its popularity as a seam tool, combined with Zenarmor to show you how we can implement Community ID flow hashing. The first part of the setup is to enable Community ID flow hashing in Zenarmor, which is today's video sponsor. And like most things Zenarmor related, it's a very easy process. Simply head over to the settings menu and then to reporting and data. And you'll see right at the top, there is a option to enable community ID flow hashing. This will become visible when version 1.16 is officially launched. And that's all there is to it. Once done, Zenarmor will automatically hash all traffic with the community ID function, and it'll be visible in all reports and logs moving forward. For this video, we're gonna build on a previous blog article that I created showing you how to integrate Zenarmor with your Elk stack, which is Elastic search, log stash, and Kibana. I'll put a link in the description below. I assume from here on that you already have an ELK stack integrated with Zenarmor and that your Zenarmor log data is already indexed in Elasticsearch if you wish to follow along in your own lab. To enable community ID support in the ELK stack, we need to set up an ingest pipeline that makes use of the already built-in community ID processor to filter and match the network connection tuple in the log data originating from the Sysmon event log on the Windows 11 client that is streamed to Elk using the WinLogBeat agent that we will configure later in this video. Once the Sysmon event log data is processed by the community ID processor, a new community ID field will be inserted into the indexed log data with a newly generated community ID hash similar to what I showed you earlier in the video. To create the ingest pipeline, you need to navigate to the stack management menu, and then you need to go to ingest pipelines, 
and you simply need to create a new pipeline. You'll give your pipeline a name and a optional description. And then we need to add a processor to this pipeline. You'll from the drop down menu, select community ID. You'll notice that you have the option to override the default field values for your community ID processor, which in the case of this tutorial is necessary because the WinLog Beat agent uses different field names for the community ID processors defaults. This means that if we don't use the WinLog Beats field names, the data will fail to be processed and no community ID hash will be generated. To make this easy for you, I've mapped the field names as you can see to the left of the screen. The other options are optional and they can be ignored. And once you've done this, you can save everything and your pipeline will be activated. For your convenience, I'll also include this table with all these mappings in a blog post. I'll put the link in the description. Now that the ingest pipeline is ready to process the log data, we need to ship the log data from our Windows 11 client using WinLog Beat. To install WinLog Beat, you simply need to download the WinLog Beat agent and you need to unzip it into your program files folder like I've done to the right. You'll then need to open PowerShell as an administrator and you'll need to run the commands like I've shown on the left of the screen. I will be including all these commands in a blog post as well so you'll easily be able to copy them from there. But first of all, you need to install WinLog Beat by running this command. I've already done this on the system. You'll then see a output that should look something like this. If you run into issues with script execution being disabled on your system, you can use the following command to override this. To configure WinLog Beat, you'll need to use the winlogbeat.yaml file in the same location that you unzipped your agent to. This .yaml config is fairly large, so I've highlighted the changes I've made with comments to the config. So here you can see we, under the WinLog Beat specific options, we've included the option here where we include our sysmon logs into, into this. The next part of the configuration that you need to change is under the Elasticsearch output heading. You'll see over here we need to point our WinLog Beats agent to our Elasticsearch instance, which in my case is on 192.168.1.104 on port 9200. And then we also need to tell it which pipeline to use. So in the previous step, we set up the pipeline. Whatever you named your pipeline, you need to include over here. In my case, I just called mine com underscore ID pipe. All these other settings just below that I've put in for reference. But if you are running Elasticsearch in a production environment, you will most likely have security enabled on it. You should have security enabled on it. Um, and it should also be running over HTTPS. Uh, because this is a lab environment, I have disabled all of the security on this particular instance just to make the configuration easier. But in a production environment, this is where you will include things like your API key, your username and your password in order to allow Elasticsearch and WinLog Beats to be able to communicate correctly. So once your configuration is done, you can validate this using the command like I have over here. If there are any errors, it will let you know or it will return that everything is okay. If that's the case, then to start WinLog Beat on your Windows client, you're simply just gonna type in this command and WinLog Beat will run as a service. So the next part is we need to get Sysmon installed on your Windows machine. If you haven't done so already, you can download Sysmon directly from their website and you'll need to extract it into your program files or wherever you choose. And then in order to make it work, you can simply use the this command that I have on the left of the screen over here and you can point it to a config-sys.xml. This config-sys.xml we will need to enable the logging of network connections 
as it's disabled by default. Syslog no longer supports the dash in parameter, which was used in the past to enable logging of all network connections. So what I did in, in my config dash sys.xml is as follows. I created a rule which matches any destination port between one and 65,535 to catch all network connections. In a production environment, you'll probably want to fine tune this to match specific specific ports and applications to avoid creating unnecessary logs. However, because this is a lab environment and a proof of concept, I want to be able to catch everything then so we can use it in our seam later on to correlate between Zen Armor and this Windows 11 machine. If all went well, you should see Sysmon logs appearing in Kibana under the discovery dashboard. To view your Zen Armor index data, you're going to have to refer to step four of the integrate Zen Armor with your Elk stack blog post that I created. And you should see data coming through like I have over here. In order to visualize and begin correlating the Zenoma and Sysmon log data, I created a very simple dashboard like you can see over here. We created two saved searches using the discovery dashboard for each data set and then we added the saved searches as tables to a security dashboard and then filtered out the unwanted data and pinned the columns which we were interested in as you can see on the screen. Basically the first table is all the Zenoma connection or session data with fields such as the source and destination IP and ports, the device initiating the connection, the app name and category, as well as the community ID fields. Below that, we have a similar table for the Sysmon log data, once again filtering for source and destination IPs and ports, process IDs, process names, and then the community ID fields. So now that our data is side by side, let's simulate a very basic threat hunting exercise to demonstrate how community ID can be used to correlate log data. So let's start by examining the, the Sysmon logs for interesting or suspicious looking process names by looking through the image paths in the winlog.event dash data dot image column of the table. To speed this up, I have already gone through and done this and I found something that's interesting just for the sake of the, the demo. So I found a process of here, which is OneDrive, which has been set up on our Windows 11 machine. And just to show you how we can use community ID to correlate this traffic, I filtered by the community ID for this OneDrive process. And if we look just above that, we can see that the same community ID has been flagged by Zenoma. And then just to give us a little bit more context about what's happening with that traffic, we can see that Zenoma has classified this as a business tool belonging to Microsoft Office. And that's the destination IP that it's been using on that particular port. We can even drill down further and go into this particular piece of traffic and we can go and get more information about what it's about. So for example, we can see that this is a destination host name, that it's busy, that it's busy communicating with Microsoft.com. Then there's various other pieces of information here which can be useful. You can then also drill down to the Sysmon log data. And over here, you can see that this came from WinLogBeat, the community ID and that it was a connection, a network connection that was detected by the rule that we set up earlier. And then over here, we can we can see all the information about like what application it, it was, was running at this process, which in this case was OneDrive, and the, the destination IP that was used, we can see that it matches up with what Zenarmor detected it was using. So from this, it should be pretty clear that you can expand on this process and you can use it as part of your threat hunting where perhaps there's a process that was not as obvious as OneDrive. Perhaps it was an unknown process or one of the, the obvious ones like 
calc.exe or something along those lines that were making a network connection out to the internet, which they generally shouldn't be doing, then you could use the same process to build a complete end-to-end -end picture of what the connection is doing on your network from the process that initiated it right through out your Zen Armor firewall to the internet, giving you a whole lot more context about what's happening over your network. So that's really all that I wanted to show you today. It was a quick demo how we could use community ID to correlate data. Zen Armor creates a wealth of accurate and actionable log information while filtering and securing your network traffic, which as you can see can be of great benefit to analysts or threat hunters operating in your SOC and it gives them insight to better detect, investigate and respond to threats in your environment and now obviously with the ability of using community ID built into that as well. So the question that you need to ask yourself is can you afford not to be collecting the log data generated by Zen Armor? If you are a MSP or a MSSP or a business that wants to get the most out of your current Zen Armor and your Elk Stack deployments, I highly recommend you to try this integration. You can start with a Zen Armor 15 day free trial and, and you can explore all these enterprise capabilities. And if you're just a general home labber or home user that wants to explore this, feel free to try this out on your home network as well. There's a lot to be learned by following these steps. If you found this content useful, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. And as always, if you have any comments, feel free to leave those in the comments section below and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys soon.